practice and I work at Lux Digital. Uh, I have an experience of about eight, eight to ten years uh, in the industry and I stepped into uh, video games probably about uh, two and a half years back when I was introduced to a project when I was in my freelancing days to create some game art for an iPhone game and that's when I particularly started to love this medium more compared to the kind of traditional animation and the uh, uh, design and uh, different related industry work which I was into. Uh, I started to play games, I started to love games and uh, I also became uh, very 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 much uh, motivated to uh, pursue as a character designer uh, and wanted myself to be uh, a character designer who could probably work on various platforms and mediums and uh, uh, do various sort of uh, similar art related stuff. Uh, this topic is uh, about how to develop uh, video game characters and uh, as we all know that uh, um, characters are one of the most important uh, elements of a video game. Uh, normally when you are playing through a game you uh, encounter the characters and you would want to connect to these characters in order to enjoy the gameplay and uh, feel more involved with the ga uh, game. So it's quite important and uh, today I'm going to share some of my uh, processes uh, and the way I work, uh, the way our studio works and how different artists approach character designs when they're uh, creating video games art. So before uh, we get started with the character design, can uh, those who are, are, are artists between us, can you please raise your hand so that I just get an idea about how many video game artists or general artists or illustrators are out here? Okay, and how many are video game artists among us? Okay. <clears throat> so what exactly is character design? Uh, if you just pick up a pencil and a paper and sketch anything on it, can you really call it a character design? Uh, maybe yes, because you have definitely doodled something, uh, but probably it might not stand uh, uh, any place in uh, with regards to the standards and the quality with which the industry and the profession expects. There are some illustrators who are even in the industry and might not uh, feel confident themselves to call themselves in, as a great character designers, right? Like even when I started, uh, I kind of felt that probably I'm uh, a good character designer, but then I also realized that. Uh, there are quite amount of weaknesses in my drawings and probably the characters which I create uh, might not be uh, that appealing or engaging to the uh, audiences uh, that I'm working for. So uh, <clears throat> I tried to uh, figure out the kind of objectives which a character uh, design and development should consist of. Uh, when you are illustrating for any of your character design, I, I would expect you to think about these goals as one of your objectives, uh, as the part of your objectives in order to design your characters. Uh, you really need to draw well, but those characters need to have some more attributes uh, in your uh, design, which is quite very much important. So some of the goals which are discussed out here are your character designs need to be identifiable. They need to stand out. They uh, uh, need to be memorable. Uh, you need to really illustrate your character so that people do remember them when they are off their games. Uh, they has to be marketable. You can probably like expect your game to do success and then uh, wish that the characters in your video games turn out to be a merchandise. Uh, they turn up into toys or stickers or comic books or uh, anything of those sorts. So it's very, very important that you get your character designs perfectly right and uh, likable by the audience, which is uh, a most important goal for any of the character design and development process. This is uh, altogether a kind of process that we follow uh, whenever approaching uh, any character design. We first of all start with the research. What does research over here for the character design mean is, uh, uh, let's just say that uh, you think of a character. Maybe you are required to make an Italian chef uh, who is probably a game character for uh, maybe a smartphone game uh, based on food and bakery and uh, anything related to cooking. And this character is supposed to be some sort of a, a more fun guy who, who, who is probably very cute and uh, connects well with the casual audiences. So you would want to research about the Italian chef and the Italian culture. How do Italian chef dress? Uh, how, how do they generally look like? 
uh, you would probably be required to collect internet references and uh, too many photographs from the uh, uh, internet about uh, various people and various chef and their dressing their uh, how would a seven star uh, chef differ from uh, ordinary chef or anything of those sorts. Uh, then after these references and the research images are uh, collected at your database, you would require to thumbnail your sketches. Uh, I generally recommend drawing about six to seven centimeter height of character illustrations on your papers, which are very quick and uh, basic doodles. I would uh, expect you to not to try to draw on larger papers uh, during your initial thumbnails, because what happens is you would get into details. You would probably like uh, care much about his hairstyle or maybe eyes or nose, but your overall character appeal might be lost somehow. So if, if you would probably attempt more like a six, seven centimeter uh, illustration thumbnail, it will uh, give you a better body stance and posture, which you can probably like make your character design more strong. And ultimately in the final deliverable medium where you're supposed to put your characters, they are going to be part of probably a small television screen or a smartphone or anything of those sorts, which will be a very small size. So ultimately it's very important that your character designs are readable on iconic sizes. And therefore it's good to start with your thumbnails, which are smaller in sizes. Thereafter, you proceed to uh, creating some more detailed uh, rough sketches uh, with respect to the thumbnails that you selected and probably liked, uh, which further underscores refinement and uh, detailing with respect to facial expressions, uh, hairstyles, clothing, uh, several more uh, information on the character with relation to his age or maybe origin or as well as like the culture he comes from, the nature, the attribute, the personality the character has to possess and convey in the uh, game that you uh, might play. And then uh, this is what leads to the final character design of your uh, video game, which you can probably take to model sheets and uh, implement into your game. Now, uh, I would like to discuss the uh, tools which I employ uh, during my character design process. And uh, just to give you a background, I'm, uh, I am uh, not from fine arts. Uh, and I just did my schooling and went into uh, this profession altogether. So I sort of uh, decided to do things and try to learn things on my own way. And therefore I chose to do what I like, uh, what I particularly like. And I am uh, personally a, a big collector of most movies, books and games and comics and all the tools and gadgets or uh, video game gears. Uh, I normally have a big workstation at my place and I generally prefer that a good workstation is normally um, very much responsible and contributes to your uh, better character design and better working. So <clears throat> some of the tools which I discussed out here, like I recommend having sketchbook uh, as part of your work, uh, work process because if you draw on separate papers, they might get lost here and there, but with an organized sketchbook, you can always like flip through the pages even during your struggling time of a particular character, you might want to flip through your previous drawings. They motivate you. They give you some solutions. At times, when you're stuck, then you are probably like taken to a different direction by the previous examples of the work that you have done. Um, you might also use animation light box, which probably a character designer might not require to animate or make 2D animations. But at times, like what happens even in our studio, like uh, maybe an illustrator might have sketched a character design and the art director would personally feel that uh, probably the mouse can have been a little more shorter or maybe the nose could have been a little more bulkier. Um, when an illustrator makes a drawing on paper, he might feel a little lazy, uh, find himself a little lazy to make those changes. And therefore, even if he, if in case, if even he was realizing the same solutions, he might not go about them unless and until he is equipped with a light box where he can probably just put a blank paper on this so, uh, and then like probably make those small changes. So uh, light box is definitely like a great solution because character design process, like again, like it has to go through numerous and numerous drawings one-on-one -on -one in order to reach to a final step of uh, the final character that you might like for your game. I also recommend pin boards, uh, place your drawings on your pin boards, uh, the good ones that you have made uh, or probably any study that you have done on your character design, uh, seeing them around your workstation, do motivate you towards uh, better character uh, sketches whenever you are attempting anything. And uh, I also enjoy uh, working in a digital space. And uh, 
vacuum scintique is uh, probably a known tool to most of uh, you artists and this is one of the greatest tool to help a character designer achieve great character designs uh, you can also work on graphic tablets uh, general intos and uh, graphire or maybe from some other uh, brands which are uh, useful for your illustration objectives if you are in mobile artist and you would prefer or you probably spend much of your time during probably on uh, bus stands or uh, during your travel or hotel stays or anything of those sorts which is away from your workspace an ipad is a good solution for you to uh, probably consider uh, doing character designs in various occasions i personally uh, have used at least like 20 to 30 drawing applications on ipad and uh, procreate at autodesk sketchbook pro and paperboy 53 are one of my favorites and probably uh, they are the greatest tools on, available on ipad for uh, illustration objectives as well as I also do use Autodesk Sketchbook Pro for uh, machine for my pipeline because Sketchbook Pro provides a kind of platform where you feel like you are working on pencil and paper. And uh, apart from that, like uh, <clears throat> it's very economical as well. I do recommend it uh, that if you guys would consider you like probably you'll really enjoy using that particular tool, Sketchbook Pro, and it's very affordable as well. So uh, this makes up a good whole. Uh, tool set uh, which is uh, suited for your working and uh, lastly you need to have some good source of inspiration available to you when you are uh, designing your drawings or working in the industry you should play games of course like when you are uh, designing characters for video games or maybe making video games art it's very much important that you love video games and uh, share the love you should uh, <clears throat> do as much of uh, explorations with different uh, platforms you should try casual games on smartphones you should see hardcore games on uh, uh, leading uh, new generation consoles you should play family games on uh, nintendo products and uh, also like uh, play around on facebook and uh, several stuff because working as a commercial artist like you normally end up in uh, situations where your uh, project managers will come up with some uh, uh, work for you which is very much like uh, uh, <clears throat> different from the kind of art style that you are into and knowing these things will uh, basically help you by a lot now now that we are about to start how to draw video game characters and design video game characters first of all we need to understand them and what they are so we do know that character exists in so many entertainment medias uh, characters are there in novels characters are there in movies and video games now, how do they differ uh, like as we know that we uh, do read novels right uh, and novel is a reading media and when you are reading a media you are probably taken to a world where you try to understand the character in more of a mental sense rather than uh, you you are exposed to his uh, physical activity or ac action based activities um, <clears throat> probably it will be very impossible or tough for uh, any novelist to probably feature a gladiator fight uh, between two gladiators who are fighting among themselves in a novel like because those action sequences are very tough to probably depict through words but definitely a novelist can tell a story of a particular person who is a misfit in the society and unable to uh, find his right place between the kind of world he is exposed to because that's more mental and uh, it's uh, the reading media is more uh, friendly for uh, mental related circumstances rather than physical circumstances whereas like movies movies uh, combine both the uh, mental circumstances as well as like the action because there's also a visual medium and the video games uh, comparatively are much more uh, physical because you are entirely like into uh, action stuff so uh, even in these examples like holden coldfield is uh, very much into uh, mental circumstances during uh, across to his story whereas like Rachet is involved into more of action related uh, uh, objectives in the uh, game so uh, it's very much important that your characters that you design are very well suited to animations and too many movements so they are very friendly to the kind of animations which will be required to uh, do your designs now uh, there might be several examples that we'll discuss uh, while going through these character designs notes. Uh, there will be some definitions, some standards, which I will try to probably share with you. 
you may or may not agree to some of these examples because there is no thumb rule for any sort of work in this world and uh, at times like uh, some people have even broken apart rules and have, have made great successes like for example even in this slide itself like heavy rain has basically set an example where it went very close to being a novel and uh, still managed to be a video game uh, which was liked by uh, a majority of us so we will try to understand some basic abc definitions of um, these character designs so that uh, it gives you a starting step uh, for when you are approaching a character design but you may never consider them to be the only thumb rule in order to approach those things and uh, if you will really attempt some voluntary and more innovative uh, methods while you are designing your characters it will make your designs uh, probably more innovative more uh, unique and more identifiable now uh, when we are working on the uh, production uh, generally the game designer and uh, the story specialist are responsible to decide what kind of characters are we about to and supposed to illustrate at times this becomes more like a challenge and a situation for the artist because artists are sometimes like inclined to make designs which are more uh, artistic friendly and probably they might end up making their sketches which might not suit to the story there has been numerous occasions even in my working pipeline when uh, many times the game designer have basically complained that hey the kind of expression that you have added to this character is uh, giving him a very mean feel i actually want him to be more like a serious and subtle guy who is like soft and uh, uh, he might not be that aggressive and i might complain no man like uh, see the way his expression is his eyebrows are uh, and the way he is facing the eye and look at his my mouth shape these things are basically helping with my character design uh, so this is uh, this is this at times like become some sort of like a challenge uh, between the artist and the uh, game designer to deal with at times probably the game designer suggestions might uh, be slightly uh, making the art weaker uh, uh, in one way or the other so uh, uh, a good balance between both of these two things is something which is always like um, a great success and that is something which has to be attempted now uh, let's talk about uh, player and avatar relationship uh generally uh, a player is the person who plays a video game and the avatar is the game character which you normally play through they are they have uh, four uh, classifications uh, non specific avatars partially uh, established avatars uh, specific avatars and player designed avatars let's take each of them one by one so one category to start with is non specific avatars these are the kind of characters who have least amount of information uh, when you play their games and it's entirely left upon on the user the player to understand the character and make uh, an understanding about what this person might be about like for example pacman is a character uh, which has zero uh, story uh, behind himself in uh, with respect to uh, what kind of nature that character might have and maybe all of us if we play pacman we might end up playing pacman uh, in a totally different way i might be an organized pacman or maybe a very disorganized uh, pacman who might eat points dots at some areas and might leave the dots at different area or some people will be very daring that they might just step into the uh, red uh, enemy and come uh, come out of it or probably some people might be very cautious first of all they'll eat those bigger dots which will make the enemies uh, turn into blue and then finally like go and uh, kill them so uh, these kind of character designs are some sort of designs which are very uh uh have very less emphasis towards their uh, personality and they are entirely left upon on the character to uh, uh, sorry the player to approach whereas specific avatars is a avatar type where uh, the character information is established uh, in a very deeper sense and you know entirely about the character's past the history uh, uh, how he will behave in a particular situation how he will deal with a uh, the people he interacts with and you will probably not be able to play the video game in in any other way other than what the uh, character is supposed to be for example kratos uh, whenever you are probably playing god of war you might have to end up killing up enemies or uh, you will always have to fight and uh, show your anger right you can never be a kratos who have some sympathy towards the people uh, from around or even the gods or anything of those sorts those 
they, the, the, those normally have a very linear storyline and normally end up uh, being what they are supposed to. Partially characterized avatars is one kind of category where the character avatars are uh, somewhere in the between of uh, totally specified and completely blank uh, characters. So you do uh, know a few things about them, but you probably might not know everything about them. For example, uh, Mario is one character. You might know that he's a plumber and he's there to save the Princess Peach, uh, but you might not know what his favorite food is or maybe like uh, uh, his favorite sports or anything of those sorts. So these characters have a slight amount of backstory, but uh, they do not really have a full understanding of what they are supposed to be. And another category is player design of us where the uh, gamer is given the privilege and the option to design his own character. Uh, over here, uh, it makes it easier for the gamer to connect to the player by probably picking up the kind of features uh, which matches his own facial features or maybe his body features and therefore get into the video game. So um, uh, they, these things are normally seen in RPGs and uh, role playing games like uh, <clears throat> where you are given the option to customize your characters. Even um, women and like female gamers, they generally uh, enjoy uh, customizing their character. They would probably spend more time uh, uh, getting the likeness right and this is some sort of a good medium for you to probably uh, encourage and uh, bring in more uh, women players into your games. Now, when we are approaching character design, uh, it's entirely dependent on what kind of game it is and what art style will suit to it. So uh, basically there are three, class, uh, three major classifications of an art style. Uh, one is a realistic art, second is semi-realistic art, and third is cartoonish or toonish art. And, uh, Depending on the story of the game, the requirement of the game, the requirement of the uh, mechanics, you would probably end up preferring uh, your art style at, at times. Also, it's dependent on the kind of skill set uh, that your team has in your studio and what they are capable of achieving. So um, particularly like I am more of a cartoonish art uh, artist and I love to draw stylized and cartoon arts rather than uh, making realistic art or semi-realistic art. So uh, my way of working, my area of working, and basically even the kind of applications of my art are mostly dependent on some uh, more like a family audience or smartphone audience or uh, general games as compared to. But then again, there are some uh, great games uh, which have some great artistic values and stylized art, but they are between hardcore gamers. So uh, like uh, uh, Limbo, for an example, uh, was very much uh, artistic, but it was uh, still very much fitting into the hardcore uh, gaming space. The Mark of Ninja is a recent release which came on XBLA and it has very uh, great stylized art as well as uh, Shank, which is uh, uh, done by a great artist, Jeff Agala. And um, uh, they are totally cartoonish and still work with uh, major audiences. Let's talk about cartoonish characters in details. Uh, I would basically like to classify them into four categories, uh, cool characters. Now, uh, from here on, every character slide that will come onto the screen, I'll try to share some information on the drawing, drawing approach that went into making these sketches and um, why were they done in such a way in order to represent the characters they're, they're just supposed to be. So cool characters are generally a kind of characters who, have, who are very lighthearted, they would uh, always be happy. They won't worry a lot or probably like even if the world is in danger, they will deal with the circumstances and situations and provide solutions, but they will always be relaxed and might not be dead nervous or concerned in any way. So as you can see a design here, a rabbit character uh, belongs to a category of being cool character. Now, how did I achieve this? I thought of probably relaxing the legs a bit uh, if you see the knees, they are not perfectly straight, they are slightly bent. This gives more like a languid uh, body attitude to the whole character design and makes it easier for your character to feel more languid and relaxed and cool in your uh, game atmosphere. He can mostly be seen smiling or confident. Um, his one fist is closed, which signifies some amount of confidence in the character. They're often even like you can make them wear sunglasses, which is uh, one another good solution for um, to make your character feel uh, cool and relaxed. Another category is uh, goofy characters. The goofy characters are 
uh, stupid characters. Uh, they're somewhat like crazy characters in your game, and they may uh, they give a whole game a uh, very much of a uh, comic relief as well as like uh, make the uh, whole gameplay feel fun. But uh, there is also a challenge when you are designing goofy characters that you might not end up making your uh, animations or the mechanics feel abrupt and uh, mismatch the expectations of the gamer who is playing the game because goofy characters might do things very differently as compared to a normal human. Uh, if you might make him jump, he might jump in a totally different way as compared to what you expected to. So he might land up or end up falling into a pit or not reaching the place where he's supposed to. So stay within your limits, but try to make a design which is funny and uh, slightly different from uh, being a normal human. So for example, over here, this goofy character, um, how do I des define this to be goofy here? It's like I cross, uh, made him cross-eyed as well as like, I didn't give him a shirt, but probably only kept the tie on him. Uh, maybe his shorts are uh, backwards and he also has spring shoes here. So probably like he does that boing boing animation instead of uh, simple walks or anything of those sorts. Tough characters exemplify uh, aggression and um, they are always like, uh, they tend to talk with their face. They're angry, they're, um, they would be very serious. They are always ready to fight. They will be very abrupt. So these character designs can be achieved through doing hypersexualized characters, which have great muscular features um, um, and aggression that you can see through their uh, faces. Uh, pay attention to their teeth, pay attention to their expressions. You can even make them see uh, directly facing the screen rather than like uh, seeing them here or there. So this also like signifies that they are perfectly making an eye contact and therefore they are definitely tough, which is why they are daring to see any kind of audience. So these are some uh, uh, good information which basically helps achieving tough characters rightly. Cute characters are uh, the cuter category of characters who look sweet and uh, innocent and likable and lovable by uh, majority of audience. The family loves it, the women uh, players loves it and uh, therefore they are a great deal of success in uh, m m many of the smartphones games that we norm normally play like we do know Om Nom uh, is a very adorable character and uh, even Angry Birds are uh, liked by uh, most of us because of their cute designs. Uh, generally cute characters are done in a more rounder form, a more circular form uh, that makes them sound uh, cute. And they also possess baby proportions, uh, but because of them being in a baby proportion, it gets difficult for you to achieve all animations on those characters. So you might require to do some amount of cheating when you are making those animations. So, probably like you might do a character who has uh, two head size of a uh, body, which means like his head is equal to his body and therefore probably the hands might be smaller than the whole uh, character uh, in order to make him reach on top of his head, head. So you might require to cheat with your animations when you are making those character animations uh, in order to achieve those results. Or probably the cute characters might be slightly incapable or will uh, end up having some uh, very uh, non-believable animation as compared to what we uh, really know in a realistic scenario. Now let's talk about uh, the kind of different roles uh, characters play in a video game, uh, which is uh, more like an archetype of uh, how characters are there in video game. I'll take up a fantasy scenario uh, of a normal uh, quest of a hero where he is supposed to save a, a rescue someone from uh, as an objective of uh, completing that game and we'll uh, discuss many of these archetypes uh, uh, and the uh, different processes and procedures of uh, designing those uh, characters. So let me start with the game's hero which will probably be your player character and um, uh, it's very important that the gamer who would probably play this game is uh, very well connected to this character. He would uh, love to be him, him and he would also enjoy playing through this character. These characters are usually the, because they are central characters of the story, they are uh, normally quite capable. Uh, therefore, I went with a muscular uh, character design approach here. Uh, as you can see in the design, uh, how did I achieve these more manly features? The muscular feature is, I went for a slightly sunken cheek. Uh, as you can see right below his eyes, uh, 
uh, after the, the the chin, there's a small sunken cheek cut, uh, which makes his uh, mouth feel more heavy and strong, and uh, therefore gives more like a uh, superhero identity uh, behind the hero uh, characterization, as well as like uh, the overall design runs through the uh, muscular feature, which will basically make your task easier to fight against any kind of enemy or beat any level of boss once you are trained and once you are like uh, more uh, mature with the character in the game. Sidekick is another classification of a uh, character uh, archetype. Uh, sidekick is a character who generally accompanies uh, the uh, hero during his quest. And they are normally here in the game to give some amount of comic relief because they are uh, usually like uh, a bit funny in uh, major circumstances. They would support the hero and uh, they would also give some sort of like suggestions to the player to, uh, or maybe the game, uh, the hero to how to uh, reach towards his objectives, but they not, might not be uh, equally capable as compared to what the hero is. So even like, uh, see, I'm talking about cartoon examples and circumstances, but these are applicable on even uh, realistic games and uh, realistic scenarios like uh, Victor Sully uh, from Uncharted. Uh, you would normally find him that he often uh, ignores and um, would not take up uh, those sort of roles or uh, activities which do require major amount of uh, action which has to be normally done by the game character rather than uh, anyone else. He might say that he is probably like his back is aching or probably like his legs are getting weaker or whatever sort of scenarios. So that it's the hero who has to uh, do that objective and complete the uh, mission. Then comes a damsel in distress, one of the major reasons why uh, uh, an objective has to be fulfilled right from uh, how it started from Ramayana. So it exists uh, in uh, various other uh, scenarios. It's uh, normally a young lady who is in a difficult situation and you are supposed to rescue her in order to uh, uh, complete the objective of the game. So this design has to be very soft and uh, very adorable. You might feel sympathy and you may sympathize with the character and you would really want that she should be rescued and uh, she should be saved. Uh, she sh should appear soft and dreamy and uh, very emotional and in innocent and helpless. So that it, you may feel that she might not be able to defend on herself and you would require to go and save on uh, by completing the quest. Uh, some examples here are Princess Peach, uh, Bandage Girl from um, Super Meat Boy, um, who is a great uh, opposite of the primary character through which you play the game, uh, as well as uh, Princess Mariko from Karateka, um, the great established between, between the Prince and the Mariko character in this Karataka game basically led to the foundation of Prince of Persia franchise. Uh, so uh, definitely like these formulas are still a great amount of hit between the audiences and they do love to uh, play games even if, when they generally have some amount of same backstory uh, within them. Then comes a character uh, person called a wise man who is a guardian, a mentor in the game and he might train the hero during the quest. Uh, he plays a great role uh, and an important role during the tutorial sections of the video game where you are introduced to the kind of abilities and the kind of actions that you can do in order to uh, complete that quest. Uh, how did I approach this character was, I thought of doing a, <clears throat> a more mature and aged character. That's what like normally you would connect with but you should still do some sort of like a serious expression on his face. Uh, uh, normally like these people might stay straight. They might not easily laugh on your failures or probably like enjoy your uh, gags during um, any un unfulfilled objective uh, if you will give any excuse to them. So uh, over here in this design also, his eye seems to be focused. He is pointing towards uh, probably the hero or someone. So these attributes are giving him some sort of like uh, being a mentor and wise, uh, wise man kind of character. Uh, they also might possess some magical powers and magical abilities uh, so that they can uh, uh, do any level of uh, things which are not possible through physical methods because they are mostly lean and aged and all, but they are uh, still quite powerful. 
these examples like uh, samos decker kane and papa blocks are also uh, the same amount of uh, wise men and probably possess the same uh, characteristics and attributes that we recently discussed then there's another category of guardian uh, who is called a threshold guardian which is uh, different from uh, the normal wise men that we discussed here the threshold guardian is a kind of guardian who appears in the story at the transitional points uh, and he does play an important role by probably uh, helping the character through his quest but it may not be important for him to uh, it doesn't matter for him whether like you really complete that game or probably like fail in your quest it's uh, he is a person in these circumstances who would probably uh, be in a neutral situation and when you reach to that transition point and meet him you are required to do probably uh, some sort of uh, uh, action for him in order to convince him to find your way to uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, move ahead like because there's a transitional point you might even require to fight with those uh, characters in order to convince them that you are able and therefore you can step into uh, uh, the further gate from here or anything of those sorts they might ask you some riddles which you need to answer in order to uh, move ahead and uh, people like this so threshold guardian is a neutral character but he always like at times like end up uh, assisting you after you have completed your uh, uh, riddle with him another category is quest giver uh, which is one of the person from the crowd which you normally encounter and you realize that that probably that character might give you some hints or clues or maybe some solutions uh, uh, with regard to your gameplay in order to move further and uh, improvise on something maybe he might give you some sort of like an advice or maybe a direction or maybe a sword or any upgrade uh, with regard to your inventory so that uh, it becomes easier for you to uh, pro uh, go further and these people might have uh, some smaller level of challenges for you ki probably uh, a farmer who might have lost his sheep somewhere ki uh, uh, or maybe uh, someone who would say that if we could complete uh, help me find out my way, to, way back home or anything of those sorts or uh, <clears throat> maybe he help milking a cow and uh, i will basically guide you through uh, uh, certain steps so these characters are the non player characters that you meet uh, during the game and they uh, are normally found in uh, role playing games usually so <clears throat> in order to identify them an important note here is they generally carry a sign over on their heads so various games that you will see uh, will probably let them uh, be distinguished between the crowd by probably having a sign over on their heads a crowd killer are the kind of people who are general uh, characters in the games they would just represent the culture and the environment and fill the background environment uh, to make it feel more likely you could consider to do some weaker character designs here or if in case if uh, between your whole team there are some people who might probably not be that talented or uh, great enough to do real uh, like serious character designs you might give them those uh, easier task to uh, for them to achieve so these characters may not be great character designs but they definitely fill up the space at times some of the rejected character designs are also uh, taken to become a crowd filler uh, character in your game now from coming to the uh, enemy side you are introduced to minor enemies uh, at first uh, they come in numbers and um, you often meet them so over here you see that uh, there are some dead rabbits who probably do not have eyeballs or anything of those sorts and um, they are still like very loyal to their bosses and they will blindly follow whatever instructions the bosses might give to them uh, it they might not care whether they are uh, friends or companions or Uh, partners in the same objectives are killed or not so uh, goombas for example uh, when you will kill them in mario the other goombas will uh, personally have no uh, emotional sympathy towards the other goombas which are dying but they are still like uh, they are part of the enemies and still fulfilling what their boss desires them to be so i thought of doing some mini creatures here uh, more like deriving from rabbits so that uh, they still feel small but they still feel like Uh, belonging to the uh, negative side by probably uh, giving them slightly uh, uh, <clears throat> disturbed uh, structures bandages here and there probably as well as like 
took off their eyeballs, um, didn't have their complete ears or uh, probably like uh, giving them these facial expressions. So these sort of things kind of helped me towards achieving a more minor enemy kind of character design for uh, this objective. Then there are mini bosses. Uh, mini bosses are very weak, uh, sorry, uh, they are slightly weak as compared to the final boss that you will encounter in the game and are probably like the second hardest uh, difficulty that you need to deal with uh, when you are uh, going through their battles. They might be huge and they might be uh, very large for you to deal with. And a final boss, which you have to finally fight after uh, your mini boss is dead and after all the other enemies have died. So thinking about, uh, while thinking about this final boss design, uh, I thought of taking up a size and design size of character, which is smaller than this character design that you see here, because it may not be important for him to be physically aggressive uh, or incapable, but probably like he has some great amount of magical tricks and uh, black magic and uh, so many more things in order to uh, 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 for example, like uh, <clears throat> he may not be required to be, uh, deal with you uh, with uh, physical activities and maybe have a hand-on-hand -hand combat, but he is definitely capable of using great number of magical powers. At times, like final bosses take up their big forms and the final form uh, during the 80%, 90% of their battle, which is also a visual indicator for you that probably now you are heading towards completing the game and uh, about to kill the boss. Uh, at that particular phase, like the character will take up a very giant form, maybe a dragon or anything of those sorts. And that's when you are normally like do final uh, hit actions and uh, kill the uh, bosses. So as we can see that uh, these are the general understanding of the character roles that we uh, can think of uh, and the designs which fit into it. We have a hero, we have a villain, we have a sidekick, we have a wise man. Uh, but also at times like you can take the liberty and tweak the story in certain way where you can probably exchange the role of these characters and think of an entire different direction behind your gameplay and the story while retaining the character designs that you have. For example, just imagine like what if this guardian who was guiding you through your quest turns out to be a final boss. Maybe you just defeated the boss and you thought that now this game is over and then you realize that the wise man who was basically guiding you through this gameplay was actually the culprit who wanted you to get killed or probably any of uh, the backstory behind this. And now you need to face him. He might be a, a bigger and more dangerous enemy than the final boss because he knows your strengths, he knows your weaknesses, and uh, he has been with you since so long. Probably even these minor enemies, they are looking like minor enemy to you. But what if these people are the people who were damsel in distress? That means like the people who you are supposed to rescue. What if they were the countrymen or uh, citizen from the town who were probably captured uh, souls by the boss or the final battle and he did some torture uh, on those characters, which is why they have took up this form and now your game objective is to basically rescue them. So you cannot probably even kill them. Uh, instead, you will uh, require to uh, keep them safe while like uh, uh, you are required to fight against them. So uh, always like these inter exchanges can um, end up uh, leading to great storylines and uh, great character development as well. <clears throat> uh, I'll quickly run through uh, a one character design, uh, Karan, uh, okay. Something like this. <laughs> uh, we don't have options for questions. Okay, if any one of you have any questions for me, 